Now we are going to go over the plot cards in a Game of Thrones the card game second edition. We're going to start with Clash of Kings. Uh, it has it will give you four gold and nine initiative with one claim. It's a noble keyword. Reaction. After you win a power challenge, move one power from the losing opponent's faction card to your own. And it has a six reserve, so at the end of your turn, that means you'll be able to have retain six cards in your hand. If you have seven or more, you'll have to discard down to six. So not a bad card. Uh, kind of doubles up your, your power challenges, gives you a really good initiative and decent gold. Uh, so that's pretty good. Essentially gives you a two claim in power challenges. Again, with decent gold and really good initiative. Now we have a Feast of Crows. Six gold, one initiative, one claim. It's an Edict. Reaction. After you win dominance, gain two power for your faction. Plot deck limit one with a four reserve. So it's got really nice gold, garbage initiative, and a decent claim. And if you manage to win dominance, gain two power for your faction. Which, which isn't terrible. Um, with the six gold, you might be able to retain one or two gold, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess because it gives you two power. I, I guess I'd have to see it in play. Seems like a good finisher, maybe. If you think you can get, get there in one turn. It's the reserve value of four that really puts me off. At the, at the end of your turn, only being able to retain four cards kind of rough. I guess we're going to have to wait and see how this one plays in the game. Next, we have a game, of, a game of Thrones. Four gold, two initiative, one claim, a scheme card. A player cannot initiate a warfare or power challenge unless he or she has won an intrigue challenge that phase. So that's pretty good, especially if, if you're an intrigue powerhouse. I definitely see this going in like the Lannister deck. Uh, Kind of could be crippling if you're if you're the Starks, um, and and Baratheon maybe. Not bad. Uh, it's got a really good reserve of six, pretty good gold too. Initiative's kind of low, um, but you're gonna you might not want initiative anyway. And this seems to be more of a defensive card. You're protecting yourself, so not not bad. I can definitely see using it in my Lannister deck. A noble cause. Five gold, zero initiative, one claim. Kingdom, noble keywords. Reduce the cost of the first Lord or Lady character you marshal this round by two, and it has a six reserve. Uh, not bad. Again, low initiative. Um, well, maybe I'm spoiled by higher initiative cards, but we have that one nine, and then we've had a one, a two, and now a zero. Suddenly the, the two's not looking too bad. Um... But not bad, especially if you play a lot of Lord of Ladies. A Storm of Crows. Three gold, eight initiative, one claim. War keyword. You may initiate an additional warfare challenge during the challenges phase. And a five reserve. So this is really good. The, the gold is moderate, but the initiative is really high. And you're going to have an extra warfare challenge. So that might work out really well for you. And the reserve of five isn't that bad. Uh, in the game, In the one game I played... I ended up, generally, at the end of most of my turns, only having about five five cards anyway. Four or five cards, so that's not terrible. Building orders. Four gold, one initiative, one claim, a kingdom card. When revealed, search the top ten cards of your deck for an attachment or a location. Reveal it, add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck, and it has a seven reserve. Uh, not bad, probably a really good early, early turn card when everybody's trying to uh, establish themselves. Calling the Banners. Three gold, six initiative, one claim, kingdom card. When revealed, choose an opponent, gain one gold for each character that player controls, and it has a six reserve. Not bad. Uh, decent gold, really good initiative. Uh, based on most of the initiatives we've seen, this is definitely... Uh, should generally give you control of initiative. And if you've got somebody that has just flooded the board with characters, you're going to have a tremendous amount of gold. Uh, so say on average, somebody has, you know, one of your opponents has three. And I generally play four-player games. Uh, so I generally have three different opponents. 
not going to be unusual for one of them to have three characters. So that's six gold, six initiative, one claim. That's a really good card. I'm kind of surprised they don't have this limited. Uh, unless I'm just judging it too favorably. But I think this is a really good card and is going to see a tremendous amount of play. Calm over Westeros. Five gold, three initiative, one claim. Summer keyword. When revealed, name a challenge type. Until you reveal a new plot card, reduce the claim value of the attacking player's revealed plot card by one during challenges of that type which uh, uh, in which you are the defending player. Plot deck limit one with a six reserve. So it's not bad. Uh, from what we've seen, it's, it's moderate initiative. Not terrible. Really good gold, five. And if you've got someone, if you're playing like the Starks and they've got a lot of warfare out, clear the warfare challenge and you're kind of protected for a turn. So that's a really good card. I see. I can see that going in a lot of decks. The unfortunate thing is they only give you one. Um, and whereas in my house we're going to have two people building multiple decks out of out of the starter sets, even if even with three, it's going to give you three. Because you're going to have three of these box sets. That'll give you three of these. Yeah, I guess that's not too bad since you can only have one. Because I, I see this getting a lot of play. Anyway. Confiscation. Four gold. Five initiative. One claim. Uh, the edict keyword. When revealed, choose an attachment and discard it from play. And it has a six reserve value. So that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to keep this in my deck just, just for when I play the Stark so I can get rid of ice. This is my... This is my ice getter ridder of her. Decent gold, really good initiative, um, and you get rid of ice or or whatever else might be uh, giving you fits. Counting coppers, oh my! Two gold, three initiative, one claim. When revealed, draw three cards. Has the kingdom keyword and a reserve of ten. So this is definitely a building for the next turn phase, because you're not going to get a lot of gold. So you're not going to be able to play many of those cards you draw, uh, unless you have a lot of alternate ways of getting gold, which entirely possible, especially if you're playing the Lannisters. Uh, so this, this isn't too bad. Again, I think this would be a really good early game card. I can see using this with, with uh, anyone, really. Filthy Accusations, four gold, four initiative, one claim. Scheme keyword, when revealed, choose a Neela character, and it has a 6 reserve. Not bad. Um, steady across the board, 4 gold, 4 initiative, you get to kneel someone that, that, you might, that might be giving you fits, and you get to keep 6 cards at the end of the turn. That's a nice, solid plot card, I think. Fortified position, 5 gold, 1 initiative, 1 claim, siege and war, keywords... Treat each character as if its printed text box were blank, except for traits. Reserve value of 5, and a plot deck limit of 1. That's not too bad if you are down on the keyword, on the, uh, the abilities. Um, like, if, if... I don't see using this in every kind of deck. You know, there are certain houses that seem to really rely on, on having printed text, the abilities in their printed text box, like the Night's Watch. Um, but I, I think it could have its usefulness. Low initiative, decent gold, and uh, maybe uh, I can see it, I can see using it against certain houses, and I guess that's my problem. I don't like, I don't like choosing cards for, for what I'm going to be using it against. I like using, choosing cards that help strengthen my deck, not weaken others. But that's me. Doesn't make it a bad card, just means it's maybe not one that I might use very often. Heads on Spikes. Four gold, six initiative, one claim, edict in war. When revealed, choose an opponent, discard one card at random from that player's hand. If that card is a character, gain two power for your faction and place the discarded character in the owner's dead pile. And it has a 6 reserve. I really like this one. I don't think there's any downsides. You get decent gold. You get a pretty decent initiative. Um, and a special ability. At the very least, you're making them discard a card. Uh, potentially, you're also gaining 2 power and killing a character. And you've got a 6 reserve. So I, I, I don't necessarily personally see a downside to this card. I think this is a good, solid plot card that is probably going to be seen in a lot of decks. Jousting Contest. 
Four gold, three initiative, one claim, the war keyword. Each player cannot declare more than one character as an attacker or defender in each challenge with a six reserve. That's another another pretty decent a pretty decent one. Um, I don't I don't see it being generally as widely used as maybe some of the others, but definitely I can see its its uses. Especially if you have a lot of abilities that are, if it's a one-on-one -on -one contest. I don't remember seeing many of those, but I remember they existed in the first edition of the game. So it may be one of those plot cards that they're setting a base for in the future. But even so, it's still not bad abilities. Four gold, three initiative. That's not terrible. Six reserve. Marched to the wall. Four gold. Eight initiative, one claim, the edict keyword, when revealed, each player chooses a character he or she controls, if able, and discards it from play, cannot be saved, with a reserve of five. Uh, that, this is another one that I think is pretty good. I, I think the problem you might run into is, towards the later rounds, if this is your last card in your hand, and you only have two or three characters, and you don't want to get rid of any of them, but yet you're still forced to play this card... Uh, so it's one of those cards that may get stuck in your deck. Uh, but it's got decent gold, got an amazing initiative, and a decent reserve. The, the only problem is I would hate to have it stuck in my hand late in the, in the game and not want to have to use it. Marching Orders. Nine gold, three initiative, and one claim. Edict War. You cannot marshal locations or attachments or play events. And it's got a four reserve. Th this... The nine gold is phenomenal. I don't even mind the... You cannot marshal locations or attachments or play events. It's the reserve of four that bothers me. Since you're really only going to be playing characters, uh, you're going to have to have a lot. Uh, you're going to have the gold to play them, but by the time you're done playing them, you better only have those four cards, because you're not doing pretty much anything else. That's my only problem with this card. Naval Superiority. Two gold, seven initiative, one claim. Siege, war. Treat the base gold value on each revealed kingdom and each revealed edict plot card as if it were zero. So that would suck. Especially if you happen to play... Marching Orders that turn. That would not be pleasant. So that's not a, not a bad one. Plot deck limit 1, reserve 6. Uh, the only downside, low gold. But you're probably... Um, well... There's a good chance you may be one of the only people with gold that turn. There's a good number of kingdom and edict cards, plot cards... So that's not bad, especially if you have a way to make up for that two gold deficiency. You know, the Rose Road or whatever it was. Um, things of that nature. So if you can make up the two gold deficiency, I, I definitely see putting this into your deck. Power Behind the Throne. Three gold, one initiative, one claim. Noble Scheme. When revealed, place one stand token on Power Behind the Throne. Action, discard one stand token from power behind the throne to choose and stand a character, with the reserve value of six. Um, I don't know, not terrible. I don't like the gold or initiative, you know, I'm not in love with it. I, I guess if I see it from the perspective of my Lannister deck, you know, I'll probably have a way to make up that gold, and being able to stand a character is a good thing. Maybe, uh, if I remember some of the Targaryen cards, they had abilities for standing characters. I think it's definitely going to depend on the deck. Not a card I'm in love with, but I don't necessarily hate it either. Rebuilding. Five gold, five initiative. One claim. Kingdom, keyword, when revealed, choose up to three cards in your discard pile and shuffle them back into your deck. The six reserve. Wow. I really like this card. I indefinitely see using this in almost any kind of deck. Good late game card, good gold, good initiative. Get some of those cards from your discard pile back into rotation. 
Reinforcements. One gold, zero initiative, one claim. Kingdom in war, keywords. When revealed, choose a character with a printed cost of five or lower in your hand or discard pile and put it into play. Six reserve. Uh, this is another one that I like, despite the no gold, uh, the low gold and no initiative. I, I think there will be times... Again, I'm thinking about it from my Lannister deck. Tyrion Lannister costs five gold. Uh, you somehow get him in your discard pile, which actually happened to me in the one game we played. You then get to play him for free. So that's not bad at all, and the Lannisters have so, so many ways to make up the gold. And uh, so do a lot of other houses. Um, I don't think it's, this is an every deck card, but I think in certain decks this is going to be really, really useful. Sneak Attack. Five gold, eleven initiative, two claim. Scheme keyword, you cannot initiate more than one challenge during your challenge phase with a five reserve. Uh, so not bad. Uh, you get decent gold. Five's really good. The 11 initiative, I think, is the highest we've seen. So barring initiative bonuses, uh, you're almost going to guarantee that you go first, and you get two claim, uh, with the only drawback being you can only initiate one challenge that turn. Uh, I think this is pretty good. I don't necessarily see it in every deck I can conceive. Uh... But a good number. That that gold is really nice. So you, you'd be setting yourself up for future turns. Potentially going to devastate somebody in the one challenge you can initiate. I think this is the only two claim card we've seen. I'm looking back through the plot cards that we looked at so far. And yeah, this is the only two claim plot card. I don't think Cersei. You play this while you have Cersei out. Uh, you're going to knock three cards out of their hand, uh, given they might only have max eight anyway. You know, that's that's a third of their hand almost. Although, so a little over a third of their hand. So, no, not, not a bad card, and I can definitely see it getting a lot of play in a lot of different decks. Summons, four gold, zero initiative, one claim. Kingdom keyword. When revealed, search the top ten cards of your deck for a character, reveal it, and add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. Seven reserve. Ugh. The fact that it's the top ten cards of your deck instead of your entire deck is kind of rough. And it doesn't give you a tremendous amount of gold. You know, it gives you a decent amount of gold, but if you get a Tywin or uh, one of the Queen of Thorns or, or some other seven cost character, that it, it's still going to leave you a little short, maybe. Not a bad card. Uh, I don't. I, it's another one of those I don't necessarily see it in every deck, uh, but I can definitely see playing it. Apparently, they see it being played a little more than I do because they give you two copies of it. So that means you'll end up with six copies of it if you have a full complement of box sets. So maybe I'm being a little harsh on it. Uh, but next we have supporting the faith. Six gold, two claim, uh, two initiative, one claim. Edict and the seven keywords. Forced reaction. After the challenges phase begins, each player returns all gold to his or her goal. Uh, all player. All right, I'm going to read that over. After the challenge phase begins, each player returns all gold in his or her gold pool to the treasury, with a four reserve. That is not something I ever see playing in a Lannister deck, but I can see playing it in other decks. Um, in the game we played, my wife used it, and if I didn't have Tyrion out, I would have been screwed in the challenge phase. So, not a bad card at all. Really good gold. Garbage in the terms of reserve, though. I really don't like that reserve, but at least they give you enough gold that you can try to get rid of as much of it as possible. Next we have Taxation. Five gold, six initiative, one claim. The Edict and Kingdom keywords. You may marshal or play one additional limited card this round, and a reserve of six. So that is really not a bad card. Good gold, really good initiative. And if you happen to have two limited cards in your hand, you get to play them both. And a reserve value that I'm sure will not impact you at all. The Winds of Winter. Three gold, four initiative, two claim. The Winds of Winter with the Winter keyword. And a five reserve. So this is 
this is really a solid, solid card. All right, gold, decent initiative. You know, there's a good chance even a four-player game, you'll you'll win initiative with this card, especially if you have one or two cards that give you a boost to initiative, and that two claim with really no limitations. You know, the only limitations are the low gold and the low reserve. Nope, that that's a nasty card. Oops. Wildfire Assault. Four gold, seven initiative, and one claim. Scheme war keywords. When revealed, each player chooses up to three characters he or she controls. Kill each character not chosen. This is another one of those good gold, excellent initiative. Reserve value of six. Means you're probably not going to have to think about how many cards you have in your hand. I would hate to be stuck with it later in the rounds when you have character advantage. Because uh, then it does nothing but benefit your opponents. This is this is one of those tricky cards that can either win you the game or cost you the game. And I would just hate to have it cost me the game. And there are two of those. And that's the last of them. So those are the plot cards for Game of Thrones, the card game second edition. Overall, I really like them. There really wasn't a single plot card I looked at and said I would never play that. Um, I could see playing every single plot card, maybe not in every deck, but certainly in some decks. So I'm very happy with what I've seen there. I didn't see any garbage, any garbage commons, as, as you'd say in Magic. Um, everything was very good. Everything is usable in some way by some house. So thumbs up. I'm very happy.